Hello everyone, today we are installing WeBid uh, via our Softaculous in cPanel. WeBid is a auction based script much like a uh, you know, eBay type of page uh, if you're unfamiliar with it. I imagine you should be familiar with it though if you're watching a video on installing it. So first thing you want to do is go ahead and log into your cPanel. You should see your cPanel looking much like this. Sometimes depending on your hosting provider they can be slightly different. Uh, but if it looks you know, like this, depending on the theme, you want to go down to software slash services and you'll see the Softaculous icon there under that. If it is laid out a little different, you may have to search for the icon uh, and just look through the, all of the icons you've got there to find it. And once you've found that icon, just go ahead and click on Softaculous and that will pull up your Softaculous page that will look much like this. And so to install WeBid, you're going to look down this left menu here and go all the way to Others and click the little arrow there and you'll see it expands the list. And once that's expanded, you'll see we have WeBid. So we go ahead and click on that and you get this page that has some information about WeBid and a blue install button there at the top. And you also have some things like screenshots or demo, which you can click on. But in this case, we'll assume that you know you know what WeBid is, and and you just want to install it. So in that case, you click that blue install button, and you get this page here that's going to ask for some software setup information. It looks like there's a lot there, but it's really not that complicated. Uh, so we'll go through one by one, and the first one you'll see is choose protocol, and you have HTTP. You'll see if you click it, you've got other options in there, but really the HTTP is the default. That's what you'll want to go ahead and use, unless you're a more advanced user and you, you know, you've got an SSL set up and, and understand that, then you may want to go with HTTPS, but we'll go with the basic for now. Then you should see Choose Domain, and essentially what that is giving you the option for is if you've got more than one domain in your cPanel account, some hosting providers will allow you to set up what they call add-on domains uh, so you can have multiple domains in there and then that's what that'll be is in the drop down you'll select which domain you actually want to install to below that you should see in directory and this is the part that confuses people the most essentially what it is asking for is a directory name so for example if your website is mydomain.com it's currently set as we bid so you would have to go to mydomain.com slash we bid to get to this installation of we bid so if you want it on just the domain you would delete what's in there or maybe you want it you know say in a folder called auctions so mydomain.com slash auction you would put that in there uh, in most cases you're probably going to want that blank and just use your main domain as as what you're installing too Next, you'll see database name, and the default that it will fill in is generally just fine. Uh, you can change it. Uh, so, for example, if you do have a lot of different domains in the account, then it's usually a good idea to go ahead and change the database name to something you know more along the lines of your domain name, just so that if you ever have to go back and you know edit things, you'll know uh, when you see that database name that it's associated with that site rather than having to sort of guess and, and look through different configuration files to figure out what that database name was randomly named to. In this case we've only got the one domain so we'll leave it as default since we only have one database anyway. Below that you should see site settings and this is just personal preference uh, you know whatever you want your site to be named my auction site for example it, it can be anything you'd like there and then as we continue down we've got database settings here and you'll see table prefix under that and the default again is fine with that you can change that if you'd like if you're familiar with what that prefix is used for you could change it but again I'm gonna leave it as default because that that's more than adequate and you'll see below that table prefix you've got admin account and this is just your information as far as logging in once it's installed. So this is the admin username and you can leave that as admin if you'd like. Uh, although I do recommend changing it. Uh, it just makes it a little more secure. Obviously, you know, admin is an easy thing to guess as far as a username. 
Uh, for the password, you definitely want to change that. Uh, pass is, is far too easy for someone to guess. So you'll want to put in uh, a relatively strong password there that's also easy for you to remember. Or if you have to write it down, make sure you write down what you type into that box. Uh, for this example, we'll just use test123. And then the next option is your admin email. And that's just going to be your email address. Uh, so if you forget, for example, if you forget your password, you can have that reset. Uh, if you've got it set, uh, you can make changes in the admin area as far as notifying you when you know new products are posted for auction or you know those sorts of things. So all of that goes to this email address that you fill in here. Below that, you should see an advanced option. Uh, if you click on this, you'll see it's to disable update notifications. You don't want to do that. You definitely want to know when there are updates for the script. Uh, essentially, what that's going to tell you is there is you know a bug in the script or a security vulnerability so they've released a new version and you definitely want to come back into Softaculous and update anytime there's a new version released so you want it to notify you so you definitely don't want that checked to un you know disable the notifications you'll leave that unchecked then below that you'll have the install button but we'll skip over that real quick to cover this portion here this is going to email the information that you've put in on all these boxes to the email address you put in there. So if you know if if you're new to this, it's a good idea to go ahead and put in your email address so that you've got all of that saved and you can just go back and find that email that it sends to you. For example, um, if you're familiar with the whole process, then then you probably won't need any of that information, or you'll know how to find it if you do need it. So in that case, you can just skip over that. And at that point you're all set so you've filled out everything you've got your admin username your password you're all ready to go ahead and click the install button alright so we've clicked install and you should see the page come up much like that that will show you the percentage the install is at and it's usually pretty quick uh, you'll see it go through much like it just did there where it may take a few seconds for the first few percentage and then it'll just pop up and show you 100% done you then have the congratulations, the software has been installed successfully. And below that, you'll want to take note of the addresses it gives you. It's going to give you the address to where you installed to, so your domain name slash any folder you may have selected, as well as the second link, which is very important. That's the administrative URL, and that's the URL you will use to log into the admin area to control your actual WeBid script. So at that point, you're all set up with WeBid. You're ready to log into the admin and start getting your WeBid auction site going.